most of us, at least I was shocked. I, I can't speak for anybody else, but I just know from my old contact network that the tempo and pace of what the Israelis have been able to pull off over the last five, seven days have been simply extraordinary in the counterterrorism space. And quite frankly, I don't think from a historic perspective, we've seen anything like this. If you look at the Hezbollah leadership uh, chart, literally from Nasrallah on down, they've all been neutralized. And I think it's important for your listeners to understand also that these are individuals that were eliminated that had a tremendous amount of American blood on their hands as well, such as the bombing of the U.S. Marine Corps barracks in Beirut, our embassy bombings, our kidnappings of Americans, to include the CIA station chief, Bill Buckley. So that said, how do you think the uh, Israeli military and intelligence managed to penetrate them so deeply? I think great human intelligence uh, tradecraft. Uh, obviously, when you start looking at uh, how do you penetrate any kind of organization, it boils down to the old acronym of MICE, which stands for money, ideology, compromise, and ego. I would bet that a fair amount of money has changed hands uh, to get these individuals into position to be helpful. Uh, human assets to either carrying in technical devices and or to report back and so forth. But I think for many, many years, JJ, the Israelis have looked at an individual like Hassan Nasrallah and have, have had him mapped. And we're just waiting for the green light from uh, the Israeli uh, president to go forward. And uh, so, you know, this is what intelligence agencies do, right? They're waiting for the politicians to make a decision as operationally, you know, are they able to do this? If so, what degree of probability do you have of success? Now that they've been penetrated, now that Hezbollah has essentially the leadership has been taken away, um, they're 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 going to go to their second layer of leadership now. You know, I think a deputy is going to take control soon. Um, what is what should we expect next from Hezbollah? Because no longer do they have that reputation. I think that they used to have. Yeah, I agree with you. I think they've been decimated to the point that uh, this is a significant disruption in Hezbollah activities. I think at the end of the day, JJ, it will boil down to how much support, logistic support, training support, intelligence support will they get from the Iranian IRGC or the MOIS, or will the IRGC and MOIS decide to back off now uh, and let calmer minds prevail? Let's not lose sight of the fact that the IDF were, were, were very capable of striking inside of Tehran, taking out a Hamas high-value target, which I understand was uh, at an IRGC safe house. So that's pretty good tactical intelligence. And one would have to say that they probably had eyes on that entire operation. So uh, the Iranians have a huge counterintelligence problem on their hands. And you can only look at the result of what the IDF has done to the Hezbollah organization to say that they have been thoroughly penetrated and have been for quite some time. So one more thing I'd like to ask you, what do you think is the reason behind what's taken place since Nasrallah was killed? Because we've seen the Israelis go after sites in Yemen. We've seen them continue to launch attacks inside Gaza. So basically you've got the South You've got um, slightly west of there, and you've got north of there, that they're launching attacks in all of these places. So what's their objective in doing all of this at once, do you think? I think they're clearing the deck of the terrorism threat facing the nation state of Israel. Uh, they're taking this moment in time to provide some buffer zone, for example, uh, with that. Uh, I've seen some reports that they've had some incursions now into Lebanon. Uh, they don't want uh, their citizens to live in fear. You know, let's face it, the October 7th uh, surprise attack, which still kind of shocks me after the Yom Kippur War in 73 as to how Hamas was able to pull that off. Uh, I, I think the uh, Israeli national uh, intelligence structure has set back and said, we are not going to let this happen again. Let's eliminate all the terrorist threats that face us today. And let's stand back and see what Iran's going to do next. 
And I wouldn't be shocked in the least to see the IDF uh, go back into Tehran uh, to take out uh, more HVTs if they deem that it's necessary uh, to just, uh, you know, neutralize the threat. One more quick thing that occurred to me, Iran and the terrorist groups that it's associated itself with over the years have always said the people in the West have the watches, but we've got the time. Um, is that, you think, what they may be thinking right now? Yeah, that's a great point, JJ. And I think you raised something that would be important for all of us to understand. But I think at this moment in time, we're seeing an unprecedented counterterrorism action on the part of the IDF. Uh, I think this is intelligence driven. This is threat landscape driven. And I think the Israelis have taken the, the gloves off uh, and they're taking the fight to their enemy wherever they might be. And I think it's going to be fascinating to see what response, if any, if any, that the Iranian IRGC and their intelligence service can muster. And just from a protective intelligence perspective, what will they go after? Will they go after an Israeli embassy, an Israeli dignitary? You know, who is going to be the target? So uh, it, that's going to be very, very interesting to see play out in the shadow world.